Oh, Claude didn't see her. What's happening, mate? Carl, how are you? Good, um, how are you? We just had Peter Queely in, first things first. He says that you have no claim to, well, he didn't, I'm paraphrasing here, but you have no claim to Zombie and that it was, the pecking order was him, Ashling Daly, and then you. Well, me and Peter have a conversation about that, but we'll have to, <laughs> have to agree to three on that one, like, but sure. How are you feeling fight week now, uh, coming into a, a big fight again against um, Maciej Krasanski? Yeah, but the minimum I feel good, but once I start cutting weight, things will change. I'm sure it won't be as, I won't feel as good, but now my everything's went picture perfect. Um, I'm a little bit later this time, coming in the fight week, so in theory the cut should be easier, but that's what happened. Was that by design? Was that a, a tough cut last time, or uh, why did you come in lighter? I mean, all, all weight cuts are tough, whether it's a couple of kilos or a lot of kilos, but just I think it's more the fact that I've been training consistently. The weight's just gradually just fell off. I haven't been trying to lose any extra weight. The weight's just slowly but surely coming down. And it's just a matter of season now where it's quite, it should be easier, but you never know. Find out tonight. Yeah, do you enjoy a fight week like this? What are, what are the emotions, like, I suppose, in the lead up to the fight for you? Um, I really do. And I see because the last time I was out for three years, and this, the, the last, that was my first time experiencing the game. It felt right. Even though I was out for so long, I was like, this just feels where I'm meant to be. It feels like home. And even that, it just feels natural. It feels good to be here. It feels like this is where I belong. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, mate, the answer correct is it feels good, and I do enjoy it now. Just from a, a personal standpoint, for my own safety, would your father be in attendance and do we need to reinforce press row this time? Of course you will. <laughs> and it doesn't matter who you bring, you won't be able to stop him. <laughs> <laughs> you had like a rocky fight with, with Carl previously. Yeah. You were down, then you came at the come from behind big tree. Obviously, you're a big absence. Was there any point during that fight where you thought, you know, the, the three year absence has caught up with you? No, mate, never. No, I mean, during the fight, you don't get to think too much. You're just sort of going off instinct. But at no point in that fight did I feel out of my depth and uncomfortable. Even after I'd been hurt, as soon as I stood up, I was spoke about this with Andy, as soon as I got back to my feet, I realised right away I'd been dropped. I knew instantly what had happened. I sat down in my corner, I asked John, Kevin and Will Flurry, what did he catch me with, what dropped me? And they told me, and as soon as I went back in the second round, I was like, right, give me a bit more. Instead of feeling out of my depth, I felt like, no, this is where I need to be. And I felt like, because I won the first round until I got dropped, I was like, I can finish this guy, I have his number. So no, mate, the answer to the question didn't feel like that in the slightest. I felt like it's where it should be. I felt where I belong. Thanks. You called for Yo Romero after the fight as well. You, you got Maddich instead. Was, did you feel somewhat deflated and is the, the Yo Romero the fight that you want next? Um, no, nah, I mean, I didn't. I thought it was maybe the misspell was Yo Romero and Cooper or something. <laughs> or it was a different pronunciation. But no, nah, mate, I mean, it's it was so tongue-in-cheek. I sort of knew Bellator weren't going to give me Yo Romero, but it was like... You know what I ask you don't get, do you know what I mean? So I thought I'd put it out there and see what happens, but like I said, I hadn't fought in three years, and this is my second fight in the space of five months, so no matter who they give me, I was going to take it. I'm just happy that I'm back in such a short period of time, do you know what I mean? So like, the answer to your question, no, no matter who they give me, I would have took it, it doesn't matter. And finally, your opponent has been one of the few people to finish, Will Flory. Has yeah. there been any uh, talk in the gym of getting more revenge for Will, or is Will I'm giving you any tips on that? Nah, no, nothing really. I mean, not trying to back Will up and say uh, this, that, but when Will fought him, Will was walking around at 82, 83 kilos. He took that fight light heavy when Will was fighting a little bit, really. And it's when COVID was going on, he wasn't really able to train either. Not making excuses for him, but this is all stuff I've seen firsthand. Um, he wasn't able to train, really. He was walking about in heaviest 83 kilos. And now there's no talk about getting revenge. I mean, Johnny Walker fought a guy that beat me in the past, Paul Craig. And I didn't want Johnny to beat Paul for me. I wanted Johnny to win to win. There's no, do you know what I mean? Like it's at the end of the day, a guy beats you, it's the same person as you. He's on the same journey as you. He's the same, another version of you fighting you. So it's like, no, it's not about getting the trouble for it. It's about getting it for me. The only way that Will could get that one back is if Will fought himself. That's the only way he could be a piece of it. Do you know what I mean? Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you very much. After last fight, Carl, you were a little bit disappointed in uh, the performance straight afterwards. I think a lot of people. I suppose behind the cameras were, were a bit shocked by that because we were all very impressed by it. When you watched it back, did you kind of see what we were all talking about? Were you more impressed with the, with the fight itself, I suppose, but the performance as well? I was, mate, there was, I'm, I'm my own worst critic. There's always going to be things I'm unhappy with. Um, I thought I, I did quite well in the first round. I was winning the round until I got trapped, but that just took the sting on. That just was a massive sting for me because I was controlling the, the fight and then I got caught. And let's be honest, if that fight, I had been trapped. At the beginning of the round, and midway through the round, that fight probably would have been stopped. Because it was the last five seconds, I think the referee gave me a bye ball, and he seen me coming to life. He's like, right, he's not fully out. Mm -hmm. But I think because it was so close to the end of the round, he gave me the chance to. But for me, it's no, mate, I was. I'm happy, but unhappy at the same time. So this tonight, tomorrow night, or Saturday night, sorry, there's a chance to go in and 
really make amends and perform exactly how I want to. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Will and, and Johnny there. I spoke to Will a, a couple of weeks ago, and he spoke about kind of the three of you and the kind of the, you know, the, the training tree pack you have. What's right for a better phrase? How good is that? Like, because it's very hard to get, you know, guys. I suppose from middleweight up to light heavyweight up to heavyweight, actually as training partners. How good is it for you to have two guys like that in the gym together? Oh, I mean, it's, it's fantastic, Sean. I mean, that's the whole reason I moved to SBG. It was when my old gym I trained in. There was no real big guys. There was one big guy. And he was at 85, 90 kilos. And if he wasn't, I had nobody. So to come down to SBG, when I initially joined, there wasn't there was big guys, but Johnny Walker wasn't there. Mm. And then now it's sort of the main staple is me, Johnny and Will. And we're all fighting late heavyweights. I'm fighting at Balthor, Will's in PFL, Johnny's in the UFC. Mm. And we're not just big guys training. We're all trying to be the best at the ring. So it's like we've got three guys trying to be the best in the world that are constantly, well, Michael will be Johnny, next week will be Will, next week will be Will. We should constantly bring each other on and push each other on. So yeah, mm. man, it's just... It's fantastic, and it's, it's the whole reason why I moved down there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's perfect to have us too. It is like. When this fight was announced, I think a lot of the Irish MMA community were a little bit perplexed by it in terms yeah, of if you, you had just beaten, obviously, the number seven ranked guy in the world at the time. Seven, yeah, yeah. and we, we'd obviously seen magic from his fight with Will, knowing that he's a very good fighter, yeah, very but unranked. Like, when you got this call, and I, I spoke to John about it last week, and he kind of explained it in terms of you were just coming back after a good while out, and you need to maybe work your way back into it in terms of in the fights, if not the rankings. Yeah. Did you feel the same way, or were, were you hoping to get the number six, number five, number four in, in the world after beating the, the other ranked guy? Yeah, mate, I mean, if they're thinking that they need to build me up in terms of fights, they might give me the first guy. You give me as a number six ranked guy. Mm -hmm. If you're going to build me back up, give me a guy like Wachanski first. Don't give me a Braxton first. But... No, I mean, like, it makes a difference to me. Like I said previously, I'm happy to be fighting again. I was out for three years. Didn't didn't know if I'd be here again at some points. So the fact I'm here now, within the space of five months, two fights back to back, is perfect, mate. So I was a little bit disappointed I didn't get a ranked guy, but my way of thinking is go out, put on a down performance, finish this guy, win decisively, and have to give me a ranked guy. Mm -hmm. That's my way of thinking. The last one for me. Rosansky might be the only guy on, on the roster to a uh, light heavyweight or heavyweight to come up in a, a muscle competition with you to be somewhere close to as yeah. being as, as muscular. Who do you think will have the advantage in, in the strength in there on, on Saturday night? Um, I don't know, mate. We'll see. Strength isn't really, it's not a big thing for me. It's just, it's a, it's a lot of bonus, but we'll find out. We'll find out. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Sean. Carl, you mentioned your training there with Johnny and Will, but I spoke to Daniel Spitizzi last week and he said a lot of smaller guys, but like to him and you and Pedro in terms of hours in the gym what's the relationships like especially when they're all coming up to the same card like? oh, I mean it's, it's it's a different kind of brotherhood like sorry, I mean maybe just a little bit sorry sorry squatting a bit too no, <laughs> <laughs> sorry thank you um, I mean it's it's a different kind of bond you develop people I mean we're living together we're cooking together we're sharing the same fucking toilet excuse my language we're sharing <laughs> the same shower do you know what I mean it's like you can't not become close to someone and it's like but they're for the same reason we're training to be the best we'll do, we're all competing the fight. So, I mean, it's, it really is. Like, not just your best friends, like brothers in a way. Do you know what I mean? And you're spending every single day with them, you're training with them, counting the stars in the match, doing conditioning with them. It's just, you develop a different kind of bomb them. You really do, like. You mentioned your big absence now, two fights in five months. What, in terms of 2023, do you want three fights back in Dublin in September, maybe one in Spain? I'm aiming for five, mate, all the way. I know it sounds a lot, but um, this one, September in Dublin again and I've got my visa application approved for the US so I have an appointment next month to get that stamped on my passport so once I get that sorted my options are limitless so like I said this one September and then maybe one or two in between hopefully like I said I'm aiming for five three or four I'm good. just on the, on the passport the there do you ask Will Flory for any uh, information about the passports? I know he has plenty of uh, experience getting about five passports in the last year. <laughs> no, I didn't need to. No. No. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Carl. Done?